Amen. Now we need to mention why my act comes with a parental advisory warning. The parent in question being my mother. The warning in question being no swearing. Now I am nearly 50. I'm worried I'm going to run off my mum. So, fingers crossed, and here's how this goes. Now a couple of you might have noticed that I don't quite have a full head of hair. Now, in these politically correct times, people say, Oh, he's got some follicular limitations going on. Or he faces some keratinous challenges. No, I'm bald. <laughs> and I like bald. See, I have not lost my hair. I have gained the enlightened state of baldness. <laughs> you know, in fashion, people say something's the new black. But if you're in it here first, all is the new hairy. <laughs> it's got a long journey to take, and I remember, you get less and less hair to do less and less with, and your hair gets get shorter and shorter. I turn around one day and I say to my father, Oh, what? How come every time I'm sitting in this chair, you're cutting less and less hair, doing less and less work, and you charge me the same price? Quick as a flash, he comes back and charged him a fine as three man. <laughs> touché, touché. I'd love to see how the witty come back. But my revenge was worn out by the clippers and shaving it all off. But the feeling of liberation on that was wonderful. No more shampoo, no more constraints of conditioner, no more waxing, no sin, no styling. Literally, all I've got now is a can of pledge and a duster. <laughs> I shine so bright. Cardiff Airport phoned me up a couple of weeks ago, offered me a job. Standing on the runway in foggy weather, kind of plains in. <laughs> and our enlightened state gives us this zen calmness, so we're all friendly. See, many times in my life, People have walked past or run past in cars and gone, Oi! All me and me! What would that be these days? Scalp shaming. <laughs> never see the reverse, do we? We never see strand shaming. We don't get 40 old guys rocking up in a convertible, roof down, hard to stay the other way, Oi! Harry! <laughs> I bet you're roast down there, aren't you? It doesn't happen. If you think about this, a heavy downpour to us is like a free Indian head massage. <laughs> Alright, no hailstones, not so good. But no pain, no gain, right? Got to take the rough with the smooth, and we've got plenty of smooth going on. I don't actually know where the hair went. Whatever it is now, I like to think it's happy. You know, they're all there, living the dream, wandering down the street. Little strip of matchstick slung casual over one shoulder. Little bit of cloth at the end, tied up in a knot, carrying their worldly belongings. Some chimneys and byways and hanging out with the other human beings of the world. And that's how it helps me sleep at night. But that and the tablets I get from the psychiatrist. <laughs> so, anyway, I think we come to the point now that you'll probably take over and go, he's going to tell us how great we are as an audience. He's going to tell us we're fantastic, and we? Uh, sorry, I'm going to disappoint you on that, but it's my first time up here. I've got no frame of reference. <laughs> That's why we bring Drew. He's the compare. He'll compare you, he'll compare us. He just walks around comparing stuff, he's very judgmental. <laughs> but then again, if you saw the state of all of us eight weeks ago, you'd understand why. <laughs> So that brings me to a close. I'd just like to thank you for your time. I'd like to say thank you for all being here. And remember, you know, I'm not really here to appraise you, you know? Because we're all adults here, yeah? We adults, we can draw our own conclusions, yeah? We can come to our own judgments and make our own decisions as adults, right? Well, unless you be. A 48-year-old man standing on stage in front of 200 people afraid of having a row of his mother for swearing. 
Danke, bis heute.